is actually zero. Like if you close your eyes, it's, it's like being back at the beach. If you close your eyes and just point, what's the probability that you're pointing exactly at a star? It's not going to happen, all right? You're going to be pointing at black, all right? I mean, that's, that's the idea of it. So I asked this girl one time, and she was like, um, she said zero, and then she came back with some other question that I was like, I knew it. And anyway, she, she, um, I still, I'm still friends with her and stuff. She uh, programs the robots that build cars. That's what she does. Very, very bright person. But, I mean, it's kind of an interesting sort of, like you never know when you're out there, you know, what you're going to run into and people and what you have common interests in. So, all right, let's take a break. I think we time, it's time for a break. We have a lot to do still. So let's be back at three. Okay, let's go ahead and continue. Um, I was kind of reminded over the break that there was a bonus question that if you have, you can turn in. Anyone? Bonus question from last class. It was number 26. Okay. All right, let's keep going here with this uh, 1.6. So here's a new problem to look at. Up to this point, we've seen infinity over infinity or negative infinity over infinity, something like that. But look at this one. This one's a little different. Let x go to infinity. What are you going to get in this first square root here? Infinity squared plus 4 square root. What is that? Infinity. So we have something that looks like this. It's infinity, but then what? Minus infinity again, right? What's infinity minus infinity? You would, you would think maybe zero, right? But it's not, because what you have is a number that's becoming infinitely large minus a number that's becoming infinitely large, but one of them could be getting larger faster than the other. So you know, one might start to pull away from the other one, and there may be a difference between the two. Or it may turn out that they pull away from each other and they are just stay at a common difference between each other. So you can't tell by this. And if you put zero, that's like big time wrong. This is just like, this is just like zero over zero or infinity over infinity. We don't know when you do some algebra, some sort of trick. Okay? So algebra trick. And the algebra trick that I'm going to use here is something we've kind of done when we've seen square roots before. What did we do? When we, when we had square roots before, you, someone said they really liked doing it last class. The conjugate, right? The conjugate. So I'm going to introduce the conjugate. What is the conjugate of that? Okay, square root x squared plus 4, what? Plus x. Now, I can't just throw that in there like that, right? You can't just say, oh, I'm going to multiply that. You can only multiply by 1, can't you? So you have to do that over itself. Now, the original part of this, which was the black part, I can look at that as all being over 1, right? What do you get when you multiply across the top, when you do your little FOIL action there? x squared plus 4 minus x squared. So I already did the cancellation and stuff. I'm, I still need to write my limit out here in the beginning. All divided by that square root x squared plus 4, but this time plus x. And 
those x squareds cancel, don't they, in the numerator? And we just have the 4, and then denominator, square root x squared plus 4, plus x. Now what happens if you try and let x go to infinity? On the top you get what, 4, right? 4 is a fixed number over, now the denominator, we've got infinity, but this time plus infinity, don't we? Not, we don't have the minus anymore. Infinity plus infinity is infinity. Would you all agree with that? And then that means your bottom is infinite. Fixed over infinity goes where? To zero. So your answer is zero. For this particular problem, it's zero. We're not saying infinity minus infinity is zero. We're just saying for this problem, it's zero. All right, good. Any questions on this? Okay, everything that we've uh, looked at so far, we've been able to do some algebra on, right? Let's try something that's slightly different. Uh, this is one that I did in the notes. Limit, x goes to infinity. Well, let's try this. I'll, I'll change it up. Cosine 1 over x. So what happens as x goes to infinity here? What do you get inside the cosine? Where does this thing go? Where does that go? That goes to zero, right? Isn't that fixed over infinity? All right, you get zero. So the inside is going to zero. What's cosine of zero? One. So this limit is one. There's no, no problems here, right? There's no issues. We never got infinity over infinity. We never got infinity minus infinity. We never got zero over zero. We got fixed over infinity, which was zero. Cosine of zero is defined. Next one. Limit x goes to infinity. Cos ah. Cosine x over x squared. Hmm. What is cosine of infinity? It's kind of weird, isn't it? I mean, you can't plug infinity in. So instead of plugging it in, just think about what does the cosine function look like? And here's a graph of the cosine. What does it look like as I go to infinity? So doesn't cosine go like this? Is the cosine function headed anywhere? Like is it going to a specific place as I go out to the right forever? It just keeps oscillating, right? Up and down, up and down, up and down. So cosine of infinity is not going anywhere, right? It's not headed. It doesn't have a limit. But where's the bottom one headed? Where's the x squared on the bottom headed to? So the bottom is headed to what's infinity squared? Infinity. So we don't have infinity over infinity here, right? We don't have fixed over infinity because cosine is changing. But what we do have is a new term we're going to use is bounded over infinity. What do I mean by bounded? I mean, there's a restriction on cosine, right? What's the biggest cosine could ever be? One. What's the smallest it could ever be? Negative one. So 
it's kind of like look at all your different scenarios of what could happen. What if, co what if you're at 1? What's 1 over infinity? 0. What, look at negative 1. What would negative 1 over infinity be? 0 still, going fixed over 0. So in any case, the bounded part oscillates, right? But your denominator keeps getting bigger. I think it's worth looking at the graph of this. Let me see if I can throw the graph up here real quick. I'm just going to graph. Um, what was it? Uh, cosine x over x squared? There's the graph out to 100. So the, what's happening is cosine, it's oscillating, right? It's oscillating, oscillating, oscillating. But the denominator keeps getting bigger, which really makes it, it makes the amplitude smaller. Go, go, back, to, uh, go back to this right here. Would you agree that that's the same as 1 over x squared times cosine x? Isn't that the same exact thing? And isn't the number A in front of it, cosine x back from uh, uh, pre-cal, when you have A cosine x, isn't A the amplitude? The number in front is the amplitude, isn't it? Well, you can look at it as like our amplitude is 1 over x squared. So our amplitude starts to get smaller as you move on. This is a, this is a great example of what you would call a dampened oscillator. Something where, like in the real world, think about uh, like a ball bouncing, right? You drop a ball, it goes bounce, comes back up, doesn't come as high as where you let it go, right? Comes back down, comes up, down, and then up, down, and eventually, boom, it comes to rest on the ground, right? So cosine is not, by itself, is not a good representation of that, because cosine goes up, goes back down, then back up to where it came from. I mean, you know, it doesn't start to come down. Where you, if you have this function, where'd it go? There it is. Look at this one. This is a better representation of what would happen with a, with a ball that's dropped, right? You know, come down, then back up, down, back, down, boom, boom. Maybe even this would be better. Watch, watch what happens if I square the cosine. By squaring the cosine, I will um, get rid of the negative, or I'll create a problem. Cosine x squared. Look at that. There's a ball dropping. Boom, 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 boom. Right? Is that better? And if I want, I can change, let me see if I can do this. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to, what was I using in front as the amplitude on that one? What was I using? 1 over x squared, right? Let me use something that, that grows even faster, like e to the x. Whoa, that went too fast. <laughs> That's still too fast. Wow, that's really fast. Okay, go back to this one. Hmm. Actually, I'm trying to compare these two. There's something wrong, though, with the second one. Maybe x squared, cosine x squared, exponential x. Okay, I don't want to get too much more into this. You can control how fast it starts to dwindle away by controlling that amplitude function. 1 over x, 1 over x squared, 1 over e to the x. All right, so what we had here was what, bounded over infinity? What does bounded over infinity give us then? Bounded 
over infinity is now going to go where? Zero, okay? So instead of having a new formula to remember, I throw this into the category that we had earlier of fixed over, where was it, fixed over, right there, that one right there. What I do is I say, and, and I'll, I think I summarize this later, fixed means fixed or bounded. So anytime you have a bounded number over something that becomes infinite, it's going to go to zero. 